Welcome to the general safety training for the Central Bakery. Today's training will provide you with information on multiple topics to help keep you safe while working with Coburn's. These will include Coburn's approach to safety, the workplace accident and injury reduction program, office and work from home safety, store visit and support safety guidelines, employee right to know and hazard communication, emergency preparedness, and finally, COVID-19 safety reminders. Coburn's Incorporated is committed to providing its employees with a safe and healthy working environment and working toward zero workplace accidents and injuries. We promote a start fresh with safety philosophy, meaning we want our employees to focus on safety and the task at hand, review all safety procedures, evaluate safety practices, suggest safety improvements, and help maintain compliance and implement new ideas. We promote safe work habits through education, training, recognition, safety committees, emergency response teams, and department safety discussions. Employees are expected and required to observe and follow safety rules at all times. 90% of all injuries are resulted in unsafe acts. If you are the only one that can change that, by remaining focused on safety, we can help reduce accidents and injuries. Another way Coburn's focuses on employee safety is through the AWARE program. AWARE stands for a Workplace Accident and Injury Reduction Program. Although a Minnesota requirement, we have adopted this as the backbone of our safety program and use it at all facilities, regardless of their location. The AWARE program defines responsibilities for all levels of the organization and how we will identify and control hazards and communicate that information to employees. It also explains enforcement policies. To ensure employees are familiar with and accountable for the contents of the program, each employee will receive a copy upon hire. The program is also available on the company intranet under the Safety Center. Coburn's believes that all employees are responsible for safety. We focus on empowering employees to create a safer working environment by taking immediate personal action to eliminate and reduce hazards. As an employee, you must attend and participate in all safety training sessions, including this general safety training, as well as job specific sessions. Comply with all company safety rules, safety policies, and OSHA regulations. Violating our safety policies by performing unsafe acts, not wearing personal protective equipment that's required, or operating equipment without guards in place will result in disciplinary action. You should also keep your work location and apartment clean and orderly. This will not only help prevent injuries, but will increase productivity. You should immediately report all injuries, accidents, and near misses and unsafe working conditions to your supervisor and participate in accident investigations as required. Another important way that you can help increase safety in your site is to fix or remove basic hazards such as spills, debris on floors, flipped or buckled rugs, or etc. For more complex hazards, please isolate the hazards if needed and report to your supervisor immediately. We also encourage you to give kudos recognitions to your coworkers for their efforts towards creating a safe working and shopping environment by using the safety and well-being value in Coburn's kudos. We want all employees to have the mindset, safety hazards and accidents, not on my watch. The main responsibility of supervisors is to be accountable for the safety of their employees and enforcement of rules and policies. To let them know what is expected and to hold them accountable for those expectations, this includes but is not limited to facilitating safety training for all new and existing employees, acknowledge safe work habits and employees who comply with all company safety rules, safety policies, and OSHA regulations. We must also counsel employees for safety violations. Ensure the safety equipment and personal protective equipment is available, used in good working order. Ensure work areas stay clean and orderly and assist in performing safety inspections and audits. Address all safety concerns reported by staff. Ensure injuries are reported and followed up within 24 hours. Ensure all corrective actions for safety hazards are promptly implemented. And supervisors and managers are also responsible for training their staff for the proper use of personal protective equipment in their area. Make sure you bring up any safety concerns to your supervisor. To help create a safe work environment and ensure safety practices are being observed, each location has a safety committee. This committee reviews monthly safety inspections and helps champion safety at the location. Support Services Center locations have one safety committee that meets monthly at the CSC in St. Cloud. We encourage you to report safety concerns and suggestions to the safety manager. This can be done by phone at 320-203-6313 or by email at russell.thean at coburnsinc.com. Your safety and health is important to us and you have the right to report work-related injuries and illnesses without fear of retaliation. Accordingly, we ask that you promptly report any work-related injury or near miss within 24 hours so that we may investigate the circumstances that caused the incident and take corrective actions if required.
Some chemicals have the potential to cause fires or explosions, and improper handling may cause serious accidents and injuries, so it's important to understand the chemicals you work with. One way to learn the critical information about the chemicals you work with is by reading the chemical labels. Right to know laws require that all chemical containers be labeled, including secondary containers and spray bottles you place chemicals in for use. The label must include the name of the chemical, the manufacturer, a signal word, and pictograms and hazard statements that identify the chemical hazards. Household chemicals and cleaners that are commonly available to shoppers will also be labeled. As with other chemicals, employees should read and adhere to guidelines on these labels as well. Another means of obtaining information is a safety data sheet, or SDS. The SDS contains information about usage, protective equipment, and safety guidelines for the chemicals used in the workplace. By law, an SDS must be available for every chemical used at the location. It's important for you to know where the SDSs are located and review them prior to using any chemicals, especially the first time. SDSs follow universal design, so no matter what SDS you look at, the information will always be in the same area. Safety data sheets at Coburn's Inc. locations can be accessed on the company intranet. First, go to coburnsinc.com, click Employee Sign-In, and then enter your employee number and password. Next, click Resources, Mouse Over Safety Center, and then click your location. It could be SDS All Locations, SDS Bake Shop, SDX Hornbachers, or SDS Pharmacy. In this example, we have selected a Hornbachers location. If we wanted to figure out the drain treatment chemical, we would click on that chemical and a new window would pop up with a PDF of that SDS. Now that we have covered the basics of Coburn's safety programs, we can start to touch base on hazards specific to the Central Bakery. Because we supply bakery goods to many locations, there is a lot of truck traffic in and out of the Central Bakery. As a result, there is a significant hazard to employees walking in the truck yard. To reduce pedestrian traffic, employees must enter the building at the door near employer parking. Proceed upstairs through the break room and down the stairs to production. Approved employees with medical conditions may proceed through the loading dock area. Employees walking through the truck yard and or driving trucks must wear high-res reflective vests. When walking to building C, make sure to use the crosswalk and watch for truck traffic. Another area that presents hazards to employees is the loading dock and warehouse area. Employees should not walk through the loading dock area unless they need to for work purposes or a medical condition. Instead, walk upstairs and over if you need to access the other sides. If you must walk through and have a work reason to do so, always look out for power industrial trucks, especially around corners or at truck bay doors, and try to make eye contact and either wait for them to vacate the area or ensure they wave you forward before proceeding. Slips, trips, and falls are the most common injury types at the Central Bakery. To prevent these injuries, it is very important that we maintain good housekeeping. This includes picking up cardboard and shrink wrap scraps, sweeping up flour and food debris throughout the day, and immediately cleaning spills and standing liquids. When working in the pan room, it is also very important to wear appropriate slip-resistant footwear. Finally, winter weather in Minnesota results in slippery conditions at a moment's notice. Always be aware of the weather conditions and wear appropriate footwear to work. When walking on slippery surfaces, remember to walk like a penguin. Keep your center of gravity on one leg with short, careful steps. Many of the machines and equipment at the Central Bakery can present hazards if not properly guarded. Common hazards include cop between and struck by hazards on our bun packaging and labeling lines, in running knit points created by rollers on the sheeters, and crush hazards by equipment that presses down. These hazards are all controlled by the use of guards. Never remove guards unless you have been trained in lockout takeout and have followed appropriate lockout procedures. Another hazard present at the Central Bakery is thermal and burn hazards created by ovens and fryers. Always wear oven mitts when handling racking or pans that were in the oven. When working on the fryer line, do not touch hot grease and wear appropriate thermal protection when cleaning the fryer. Heat stress is another hazard present at the Central Bakery. High outside temperatures combined with heat generated in the baking process can result in high heat and humidity inside the facility. Working in these conditions for extended periods of time without taking appropriate precautions can result in heat stress illnesses. Signs and symptoms of heat stress include headache and nausea, weakness or dizziness, heavy sweating or hot dry skin, elevated body temperature, decreased urine output or dark urine, and extreme thirst. If you experience these when working in high heat, inform your supervisor immediately. Actions to take in the event of these symptoms include drinking cool water, removing unnecessary clothing, moving to a cooler area such as the break room, cool body with water, ice, or fan, and seek medical attention if needed. 
To prevent heat stress, the Central Bakery has implemented the Heat Alert program. This program ensures employees are alerted of high temperatures and encouraged to drink at least four cups of water every hour. Water bottle fill stations are available throughout the facility for this purpose. In addition, all employees are provided an additional five minute break period every hour in the air conditioned break room. Heat alerts will be declared when outside temperatures reaches 95 degrees or higher, or outside temperature reaches 90 degrees or higher for three consecutive days, or finally, if there's high humidity in the building at the manager's discretion. Make sure to take these alerts seriously and follow the safety measures noted in the event of a heat alert. The improper use of box cutters can result in laceration injuries. Make sure you use only cutters provided by the company and use the right cutter for your hand dominance. Using other cutters may result in disciplinary action. Safety features of the box cutter include an ergonomic style handle, a tape cutter to help cut tape without needing to expose the blade, and a thumb rest to add stability and grip when using the cutter and to protect the thumb of the off hand. Make sure you keep the non-cut hand out of the path of the cutter. When you are using this, make sure to keep your blades as sharp as they can. This reduces strain and the risk of slipping. Change the blade often and dispose of the old blade in a disposal container. When using box cutters, always cut away from you. And finally, make sure the blade is fully retracted when not in use. Electrical safety is everyone's responsibility. It is important to remember, when it comes to electrical work, only employees who have been trained or authorized to work in electrical equipment may do so. You should become acquainted with all potential electrical hazards in your area and notify your supervisor of any condition, person, or behavior which poses a potential electrical hazard. Any hazards found must be immediately corrected or removed the defective equipment from service until it can be repaired. Never drape power cords over hot pipes, radiators, or sharp objects. Do not use extension cords as permanent wiring, and always check for frayed, cracked, or exposed wiring on equipment cords. Do not use a cord if the ground plug is missing. Remove from service any defective cords. Mark as out of service and give them to your supervisor for replacement. Ergonomics is very important in any manufacturer setting, but especially for those employees working in the cake decorating room. Ergonomics involves designing a workstation and layout to fit the worker. Improper design and layout can result in serious lifelong injuries or illnesses. Common risk factors at the Central Bakery include awkward sustained postures and repetitive motions. To prevent injuries, employees should always try to maintain neutral postures. This includes a straight back and neck and keeping your arms as close to your body as possible. To achieve this, stand as close to your work surface as possible and keep your elbows at your sides. Do not extend or wing out your arms. If you have to move a package or bakery good from one surface to another, always pivot using your feet. Do not twist at the waist as this can result in back injuries. Cake room employees should also use short handled scoops for icing to reduce wrist stress. Ensure icing is of proper consistency. Too thick will be difficult to squeeze. Use the C grip while keeping your wrist straight to reduce stress to the hands. And do not pinch fingers to hold items. Instead, use handled containers and utilize a C grip. And finally, utilize risers to ensure cake surfaces at a proper height to keep a body in neutral position. Preventing sprains and strains in the workplace begins with proper lifting techniques. Most back problems are preventable and not all work related. Some other factors contributing to back injuries are poor posture and physical conditioning. Remember when lifting, stand with a balanced stance, feet shoulder width apart. Squat down, get as close as you can, and with a secure grip will keep the load from slipping. Look up, this ensures your back is straight and lift gradually using your legs while keeping the load close to you. Also, don't lift and twist. Lift first, then use your feet to pivot and turn. Ladder safety. Never take a ladder for granted. 20% of all fatal falls are from a ladder. So when using ladders, select the right type of ladder and height of ladder for the job. Always inspect the ladder prior to use. Never lean a step ladder. Always fully open and lock the step ladder. Utilize three points of contact when on the ladder, two hands and one foot, or two feet and one hand at all times. Face the ladder and remain centered. Do not overreach or transport product or material that could cause you to lose balance and fall. Do not step off a ladder if more than four feet high unless fall protection is used. This section of the training covers OSHA guidelines commonly known as lockout tagout. Lockout tagout is a warning and prevention system meant to isolate the energy source and to keep machinery from starting up while someone's working on it. Although only maintenance employees are trained to perform lockout tagout, all employees must be aware of the guidelines. Lockout tagout requires authorized personnel to place a lock and a tag on equipment at its power source to physically prevent the equipment from being plugged in or powered up. The tag identifies who the person is and the reason for the lockout. 
There may be multiple energy sources, so each one will contain a lock. To ensure the safety of all employees, lockout takeout devices must never be removed except by the authorized personnel. Any unauthorized attempt to remove or bypass lockout tagout or attempting to start equipment that is locked out will result in disciplinary action. This next section covers bloodborne pathogens and how we can work as safely as possible in an environment which may bring us into contact with infected blood or bodily fluids. Bloodborne pathogens are defined as microorganisms present in human blood or bodily fluids that can cause infections or serious disease. While the likelihood is low, employees do have the potential to come into contact with bloodborne pathogens during a medical emergency, accident, or if a guest or employee becomes ill. Coburn's has an exposure control plan as part of its Right to Know Compliance Manual. This plan is to provide safe practices for handling hazardous material, communicating the hazards, and providing training. In addition, it provides for counseling and treatment in the event of possible exposures. This plan is available to all employees upon request. There are a few basic steps all employees should take to protect themselves from bloodborne pathogens in the event that you come into contact with blood or bodily fluids. Always assume that all blood or bodily fluids may be infected and take precautionary measures to minimize your exposure. In the event of a medical emergency, your responsibility is to contact the location director or manager on duty and seal off the area to avoid exposure to other guests. Make sure you know the location of the first aid kit and infection control kit and familiarize yourself with their contents. Always use the Good Samaritan Law as a guide. Provide reasonable aid or comfort the guest to the best of your ability. Notify emergency services if needed. Influenza and the common cold are illnesses we have learned to prepare for each year, but with the outbreak of the coronavirus, those measures we take to stay safe are more important than ever. With regard to the coronavirus, you can become infected by coming into close contact, or about six feet, with a person who has the virus. It's primarily spread from person to person. You can also become infected from respiratory droplets when an infected person coughs, sneezes, or talks. Finally, you may also get it by touching a surface or object that has the virus on it and then touching your mouth, nose, or eyes. Common symptoms include fever, a temperature greater than 100.4 degrees Fahrenheit, cough, and shortness of breath. In addition to fever, cough, and shortness of breath, symptoms include headache, fatigue, muscle or body aches, chills, sore throat, new loss of taste or smell, congestion or running nose, nausea or vomiting, and diarrhea. If you have any of these symptoms and they cannot be related to an existing condition, please stay home and contact your supervisor for further instructions. Another important method to reduce the spread of coronavirus is social distancing. It is vital that we maintain six feet of distance while performing our duties, but it is equally important to stay social and encourage each other. Use air high fives or other non-contact appropriate gestures to encourage each other throughout the day. Converse as usual, but maintain the six foot distance. Use kudos, safety, and well-being to recognize your coworkers' efforts and increase morale. When performing group huddles or meetings, meet in a large open area where six feet of distance can be maintained by all employees. This section of the training deals with how we respond to emergency situations. The Central Bakery utilizes air horns to alert a fire. In the event of a fire, evacuate to the nearest emergency exit and assemble in the parking lot for a headcount. If severe weather is present, an announcement will be made over the PA system to seek shelter. In this event, immediately seek shelter in small interior rooms without windows on the main floor, hallways on the main floor away from doors and windows, and the bathrooms near pan washing room. According to the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, workplace violence is any act or threat of physical violence, harassment, intimidation, or other threatened disruptive behavior that occurs at work. Some common causes are disputes, frustrations, domestic situations entering the workplace, and nearby criminal activity. Workplace violence can take many forms. NIOSH classifies the four main types as violence committed during crimes, violence by guests or recipients of services, violence by fellow employees, and violence by people with whom employees have relationships outside of work. Before we look further into workplace violence, it is important to make the distinction between workplace bullying and other types of workplace violence. Workplace bullying is defined as defensive behavior that is systematic, repeated, and involves mistreatment of another at work. More specifically, workplace bullying may include public criticism, insults, intimidation, shouting at others, teasing, and spreading malicious rumors. Workplace bullying, while almost always causes some amount of psychological harm to victims, can lead to physical violence if left unchecked. There are usually warning signs before somebody becomes violent at work. As an employee, it's vital for your safety and the safety of your coworkers to recognize these signs. 
someone talks about retaliating against another individual, someone talks about or plans to hurt themselves or somebody else, you see concerning or threatening statements regarding potential workplace violence posted on the internet or on the facility's premises, someone brings a weapon or talks about bringing one, you see a sus suspicious package, some discusses current or past violent behavior, someone displays serious or unprovoked outburst of anger, someone shares bizarre and unusual thoughts of concern, someone shows signs of domestic abuse or drug or alcohol use. You may also recognize early warning signs of possible violence in the behavior of people who may become the victims of the violence. For example, when someone is afraid they are going to be hurt by someone else. Everybody goes through phases when they experience stress in their personal lives, in their careers, or both. During these difficult times, it's common for people to display behaviors similar to the warning signs for workplace violence. It's important to remember not to jump to conclusions that someone is going to become violent just because a person is late for work a few times, looks scattered occasionally, or complains about their manager. Before someone becomes violent in the workplace, there are often warning signs from that person and sometimes from people afraid that someone else is going to hurt them. Violent behavior usually moves through three stages, early warning signs, intensification, and then open aggression. If you notice any signs or behaviors that may lead to workplace violence, be sure to report this to your manager, human resources, or loss control immediately. If you feel your life is in imminent danger, contact authorities. While very unlikely, active threat is still a possibility that we must prepare for. An active threat situation is an individual actively engaged in killing or attempting to kill people in a confined and populated area. In most cases, active threats use firearms, but any weapon can be used. In the event of an active threat emergency, you have three options. Run for safety if you can, and if safe to do so. Get out and get to a safe place. Once outside, warn others and keep them from entering. If running is not possible, hide. Find protection behind furniture or find a back room that locks. Close and lock the outside door and blockade it with furniture or heavy items and be sure to silence your cell phone. If all else fails, fight, but only as a last resort and only if your life is in imminent danger. Attempt to incapacitate the, the aggressor. Be aggressive, throw items, club or stab the shooter. Do whatever you can. Remember, at this point, your life depends on it. To help ensure your safety and the safety of others, be aware of your environment and any possible dangers. Always have an escape route or place to hide in mind. And always keep coworkers and guests in mind and assist them in responding. Can I get you started with drinks? Oh, sorry, I gotta take this. We'll need a minute. Man, you need to back up. You can't be here anymore. Get out of my face, what, man. You think I'm afraid of you? Get, get off me! direct pressure to the wound to stop the bleeding until we can find a tourniquet. In the meantime, turn off your phones and make a plan to defend yourself.
control the shooter. I'll go for the gun. He'll go for his arms. The bartender will go for the head. survive a mass shooting, if you're prepared. Remember, run, hide, or fight. Run. Wherever you go, be aware of alternate exits. Quickly and cautiously evacuate in a direction away from the attacker. Don't hesitate. Seconds matter. Remember windows and emergency exits. Leave belongings behind. Keep your empty hands raised and clearly visible when exiting a building. Follow all instructions from the police. Don't stop until you're sure you've reached a safe location. Hide. If there is no safe escape route, find a good hiding place. Lock and barricade the door. Silence cell phones. Prepare a defense plan. Fight. Fight only as a last resort. Use available objects as improvised weapons. Use teamwork and surprise. A coordinated ambush can incapacitate an attacker. You're fighting for your life. Don't fight fair. Stop the bleed. A victim can die of uncontrolled blood loss in five minutes or less. Apply pressure or a tourniquet to control severe bleeding. Go to fbi.gov slash survive to learn more. Thank you for completing today's training. Always remember that your efforts and actions have direct effects on safety outcomes. We appreciate all that you do and hope you will keep the mindset. Safety hazards and accidents? Not on my watch. 